We are being inundated by callers this morning on this situation that yet another botch up between the referee and VAR officials last night, this time at Old Trafford Wolves, who, who did so well in the second half of that game against Manchester United, did everything but score and then they had an opportunity at the end and Anana seemed to take not one but two Wolves players out but no penalty given, uh, no explanation from <laughs> VAR officials this morning, no transparency as we were promised by Howard But Webb. it doesn't help all also, when you've got the disingenuity from people like, uh, uh, you know, uh, Ten Hag, because it's a penalty. Everybody knows it's a penalty. And for him to sit there and suggest it's not a penalty mm. is ridiculous because guaranteed dollars for donuts, if he was sitting on the other side of this argument, he'd say it's a penalty. Yeah. And this kind of disingenuity doesn't help football because they're the first ones, the football fraternity, to go after the refereeing fraternity for their performances, for their lack of consistency, for their lack of transparency. You've got a big time manager. It's not his job to sit there and make a case for someone else. But you want change in sport. You want referees to be held accountable. Hold yourself by the same standards Absolutely. because you're the only person in a bleeding hemisphere that believes that wasn't a penalty. Yeah. Dollars for donuts. You've gone earlier this morning with that <laughs> one. Uh, so many calls coming in. 0371722344. Uh, just before I come to you, uh, Jason, Richard in Belfast, Jim Salmon, referees and the VAR and the body representing them, PGMOL, got to be held accountable for something like this because it could cost a manager his job and he might have a run now. But what does account- it doesn't get out of it? Okay, but that's great. What does accountability look like? It looks like the ability to rectify it. People are going to make mistakes. Now, the conspiracy theorists will say it's a fear. It's actually because he's a, he's in the pocket of Manchester United, because he was bought and paid for, because ultimately he was under the pressure. And if it had been the other end, all of that. And I get all that because that's the nature of the emotivity. What does accountability look like? I don't think, not because I'm you know a fanboy for Howard Webb, I think Howard Webb will get into the nuts and bolts mm. of this from mm. the standards, from the bottom up, yeah. and you'll see a better outcome. But you are still going to see these mistakes. Yeah. Because you've got human beings involved. Jason, a big Manchester United fan. Jason, good morning. You get lucky last night. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think we may have got away with one yesterday, I think, to be honest with you. Yeah, so you what, think? <laughs> what should happen, Jason? Like this morning, what? transparency, but it ain't going to change the decision, right? It, it isn't going to change the decision. I think we're debating transparency, accountability, and calling for all that stuff. I think all, overall, there's a problem with how VAR is implemented. So we've been saying for years the referee needs help. And then what we're saying to them, if you see her coming together in the box, 50-50 or 60-40, which many, many challenges in the box are that, what we're saying is rather than you look at the screen and making your decision, we're saying if you don't see it or you're not sure, if you guess and you're horrendously wrong, we'll overrule it. But you're not going to be horrendously wrong on a 50-50, 60-40 type of challenge. So I think we're saying to the referee, just guess what you think is going to happen and then we'll, we'll, we'll overrule it if we need to. I actually think what should happen is... The referee should allow the play to continue. Ball goes out of play with a corner or a goal or whatever it might be. He then goes to the VAR himself and says, I've seen it come together in the box. I didn't quite see it. I had players in front of me. Can you show it me on the screen? I'll make my call whether I think it should be a penalty or not. Not bad. Not bad. Well, so, nodding. so VAR becomes a television studio which just, just projects imageries to the referee rather than gets involved in the decision-making process. Is that what you're saying? If, I would say it's a difficult one because obviously you go down the line of when should the AR get involved. I don't like the fact that I, I think the man in the middle should control the game. So I, I agree. Would like the, the I VAR agree. Okay. Good call, Jason. Listen, thank you for that. Lots of good points. Connor's an Arsenal fan. Connor, what did you make of it? Good morning. Good morning, guys. Morning, Connor. So, what's your, I mean, Wolves got robbed, right? Yeah, hundred percent got robbed. Hundred percent got robbed. And I don't, I don't understand this season that they're demanding. Um, better behaviour from players and players are all essentially not even allowed to talk to referees anymore but when they make decisions like this like, like you guys are saying no one's held accountable mm. no one comes out and apologises and if they do what, 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 does, what does that do? Who's, does, that, does that get points or results? No, no it doesn't the referees union have been sat behind VAR um, sat in the VAR room for a couple of years now yeah. and nothing's changed they just look out for each other and they seem to not want to make fools of each other Okay, Connor, good call. Well, Thanks just, for that. They just did. They just, they just made fools of one another. So that's a fool's argument in its own merit. And the, and the, and the perspective of... I, I don't want this argument to manifest itself, Jim, where oh, the referees should not be dealing with the players' behaviour because they've got to get their own their own standards up. They're two different things. Yes, of course They're two they different things. Lee and Sarah Bridges get an interesting one. Simple, guys. Carry on to the next game. Wolves begin it with a penalty. I'm oh, not yeah. so sure that'll go down well. I'm sure the next opposition will like that. John, big Chelsea fan. John, good morning. 
Morning, gents. Great show. Glad to see Simon back on his feet as well. Thank uh, you. Yes, well said, John. Well I've, said. I watched a clip on Twitter about six months ago of an, of an Australian League game where there was a referee in a VAR and they were discussing a decision that was a yellow of a possible overturn to a red. Now, this is the Australian League. It's not the best league in the world, far from it. Apparently, the Premier League is. So, why are we not getting that dialogue during the game? If the Australian League can do it, why can't we? Great point. That's a great point. Well, that's IFAB's fault, isn't it? They don't allow it. But it's not just—it's not just our leagues. It's all leagues, isn't it? It's all of the leagues in the major leagues aren't enabling this this dialogue to be manifesting itself in the stadium. I do go back to the sentiment. I'm not suggesting it's right or it's the ultimate sentiment. Yeah. The culture of football is very different, and the culture of Australian football isn't the same temperature. It doesn't have the same intensity. I'm not condoning it. I'm not saying we shouldn't be able to do it. I'm just suggesting that when it happens. It will be the next. It won't be the solution. It'll just be another part of the equation where we've ticked a box of doing things. People are going to be equally as enraged by the decision-making process going on, and they're going to get to hear it now. Yeah, that's just the difference. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, this morning, if we got transparency, you're right to an extent, Simon. We would say, yeah, look, this is how they arrived at the decision last night. But that was last night. The game's come and gone. And the three but points it, went to United, nothing changes. What does accountability look like? Does accountability look like the referee being out in front of the news building in, a stock, in, a, in some stocks while people are throwing tomatoes at him? Or does it, <laughs> or does it look like him suggesting um, through, the, through the PGMOL that the decision-making process was wrong? And then we want to know why. I suppose we want to know how you've got to that decision. That's and what we're it. saying is in real time, people inside the stadium would like to know that. Now, that would be what benefit is wisdom if it doesn't profit the wise because everyone can get enraged in real time rather than post the event. <laughs> but the bottom line is, is the only way... The sun, sunlight is the best disinfectant, isn't it? The more you drag these situations into the public domain and you see how decision-making processes are made, the less likely people are going to be yeah. able to make these mistakes yeah. without some feeling of ownership. Because the ref, I agree, I agree with Jason that called earlier on. Mm. The refer, I've always maintained that the referee on the pitch should be the one that calls for VAR. Right. And if he doesn't call for VAR, then ultimately the refereeing at uh, the PGMOL should be looking at the referee's interaction with VAR saying you're not fit for purpose either on the pitch or using the tech. Okay. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.